top 10 terrifying swimming spots in the United States. Yep, that's what we're talking about today, folks. Swimming holes. Everybody knows one. Where I grew up, we went to a place called Rats Beach, which doesn't have a bunch of rats on it. It was a cove where Torrance Beach meets the cliffs of Palos Verdes. It never really had a name, so people referred to it as right after Torrance or Rat Beach. But everyone has that spot they know of wherever they came from. Some of them are freaking dangerous, whether it's a undertow, something's in the water, currents, toxins, and some have stories and histories that make them terrifying, but people still swim there. That's what we're looking at in this video. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Monastery Beach, California. This beach is up near Monterey, California, just south of Carmel by the sea, or like everyone else calls it, Carmel. I don't know why they have that Carmel by the sea. It drives me crazy. This beach has such a high drowning rate that it's nicknamed Mortuary Beach due to the combination of freak waves breaking on shore, strong rip currents, and the shoreline just kind of drops off pretty steep. Since the 1960s, more than 30 people have died at this beach. That includes recreational swimmers, tourists, scuba divers, and in 2019, some dad was trying to save his son that got swept out. The dad drowned, the son made it back to shore, or at least was pulled from the water by Good Samaritans. Back when I went, this is years ago, uh, they didn't have a lifeguard tower there during the summer at all. I understand they do now, but back then, not at all. It was like the wilderness, you were on your own. I don't think they had a bathroom back then. Besides the beach, you also got these cliffs that drop off into the water. They're not really high, but people get damaged over there all the time, falling on to the rocks. But yeah, stay away from Mortuary Beach. Number nine, Mono Lake, California. Mono Lake is one of those ones that has a really weird history, and it's got a lot of weird stories dating all the way back to the mid-1800s. Mono Lake is very unique. It's been around for over a million years. It's known as a saline soda lake, meaning over the million years or so, salt and minerals have built up, and it's actually two and a half times saltier than the ocean. On top of that, the alkalinity is way out of whack in this lake. When you go there, you see all these things jutting out of the water, these towers, and they're salt towers. The high levels of salt and other chemicals creates a really strange ecosystem. The only thing that lives here are brine shrimp, flies, the birds that eat them, and algae. The lake's gross. I view it as a toxic waste dump, and people still swim in it. If all that's not gross enough, they keep finding dead horses all around the lake. One of the biggest problems of this lake is it's not connected to any other body of water. There's no like river flowing into it or anything like that. It's basically a giant puddle. It's also dropped 45 feet in the last 40 years. So it's just getting saltier and more toxic. People go there and they like to float in it and take pictures of themselves floating in it because it's got such a high salt content, kind of easy to float in. If you ever go there to float, you know, be on your toes. Look around, people get murdered up there. Number eight, Lake Mead. Lake Mead is what sits behind Hoover Dam near Las Vegas. Las Vegas has a really shady history, especially back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They say there's a lot of bodies buried in the desert around Las Vegas. Well, there's a lot of bodies in that lake. It's easier than digging a hole. That's a great line by Joe Pesci. You know, he plays a hitman in the movie Casino. He gives advice on burying someone in the desert. Make sure you dig the hole ahead of time. Because if you're sitting there with a body and you're digging a hole, someone always shows up. Next thing you know, you're digging holes all day. Lake Mead is one of the most dangerous lakes for swimmers and boaters in the United States. It's got submerged trees, rocks, and other debris that can cause serious damage and even death to a person that collides with them. People have drowned because they've been caught up and entangled in fishing lines and abandoned nets. This is the largest man-made lake in the entire United States. It's very popular, especially it's in the middle of the desert, so a lot of people during the summer, that's where they go for recreation. You want to get in the water. Up until the winter of 22-23, the West had been going through severe drought conditions and Lake Mead got to record lows. This, of course, led to the discovery of a lot of bodies. One was in an oil drum, still wearing the suit he bought at Kmart back in the mid-70s. Lake Mead has been responsible for over 300 drownings, and the area around it, the Lake Mead National Recreation Area, has been named the deadliest park in the United States, with over 250 deaths in the last decade. 
Number seven, Jacobs Well, Texas. Jacobs Well is a spring in the Texas Hill Country. It is located on the property of Jacob Wells Natural Area, and it's managed by Hayes County Parks Department. It is kind of an amazing oasis when you see it. I mean, could you imagine being back in like the 1800s and coming across it then? The whole area is just dusty and dirty. Then you got this little spring here. It's kind of interesting. On the surface, Jacobs Well is only 12 feet square. The Houston Chronicle reported that a dozen people People have died scuba diving in Jacob's Well since the mid-1970s. In 1979, two young Texans were caught in one of the well's caves and drowned. Yeah, there's caves all underneath that 12 foot of water. Here's where it gets gross. One of those two teens was flushed out of the well in 1981. The other stayed there until 2000 when they went on a recovery mission for him. That's how big this thing is under the surface. It took them all those years to go down and get a body or the remains, I should say. They don't have a lifeguard there or anything like that. But like I said, the Houston Chronicles say that a dozen people have died there scuba diving. They've also had swimming deaths. If you go there, there's like this wading pool where, you know, it's like shin deep, knee deep. A kid might go up to their waist and then it just drops out into a hole, just like a tube straight down. Jacob's Well is amazing, but it is also very dangerous. It's a swim at your own risk thing, and I would suggest never going there unless you're a strong swimmer and you got someone there to pull you out if you get into trouble. Number six, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. This is like the shark bite capital of the world, honestly. Every single year, it seems like someone's gotten bit by a shark in the water there. This is a beautiful beach not too far from Orlando. It's where all the people go after they've picked up about $8,000 in debt by visiting Disney. Just look at your family. Hey, how about we go to the beach and spend less than $1,000 today? It's also popular by other tourists, cruise ships, and a lot of locals go there too. It is nice. It's a wide beach. You can drive your car onto it. That's something you can do in Florida all over the place. You can't really do that much in California where I grew up. I know of very few places. Pismo Beach was one you could drive your car on there and then motorcycles, whatever. But New Smyrna Beach, you can drive right up there and watch people get bit by by sharks. From 2010 until now, there have been 10 deaths in the surf of New Smyrna Beach and at least 34 known shark attacks where the person survived. While I was researching this like nine days ago, they had back to back days where someone got bit by a shark. Right up the coast a little, Daytona Beach has a lot of shark attacks too. This whole area. Now they don't always result in the death, but Florida has more shark attacks than any other place on the planet. In 2022, World wide there was 57 unprovoked shark attacks meaning there was a shark and he's minding his own business and you like start talking trash to him and provoked him into biting you the united states had 41 of those 57 australia only had nine of that 41 shark attacks florida had 16 of them so new smyrna beach and daytona beach that gets the lion's share of the shark attacks every year but the entire state of florida is pretty rough Number five, Coast Guard Beach, Massachusetts. Coast Guard Beach on Cape Cod is a popular destination for swimmers and surfers. This one, though, is not dangerous because of sharks or anything like that. It's dangerous because the currents. Here's a piece of advice for people that go to beaches like this. And this is coming from myself, who's lived by the beach most of his life. If you're looking at the waves and they're going four different directions, stay out of the water. In my life, I've pulled at least four people out of the water and it was conditions I normally wouldn't have gone in without a surfboard. It's different when you're on a surfboard, at least you're floating, but people decide to go swimming in that kind of water. It's nuts. They just don't understand. It's so bad at Coast Guard Beach that it's not just the lifeguards or the Coast Guard giving you information about this. The state police are involved in educating people when they come to this beach. People drown at Coast Guard Beach all the time. And it normally is people that went out swimming without anyone around watching them. A lot of people get rescued off this beach every single year, but it's always those ones that go swimming alone. Number four, Cape Hatteras National Seashore, North Carolina. That is a mouthful. This is a popular destination for just people wanting to go to the shore, tourists, locals, and surfers. But it's also one of the most dangerous beaches in the United States. This one really has to do with weather and currents also. The current will take people out, riptides, whatever. Storms and squalls pop up unexpectedly. Lightning strikes are frequent. All these pose a significant threat to life on this beach. Cape Hatteras has been known as a hazard since the middle of the 16th century when the first ships cruised on by. 
It's like this little jetty almost that sticks out into the Atlantic Ocean with two major ocean currents with very different characteristics converge off the Cape. Besides being a sailing hazard, people get into the water right there all the time. Now, this really applies to sailing there, but I think it's interesting. This area of North Carolina is known as the graveyard of the Atlantic. That really doesn't conjure up any good vibes for going to the beach, if you ask me. Number three, Hanama Bay, Hawaii. Hanama Bay is on the island of Oahu, and it's one of Hawaii's most popular snorkeling destinations, but it's also one of the most dangerous. The bay is prone to strong currents and sudden drops in water depth. Hanama Bay is actually considered one of the most dangerous beaches in the state of Hawaii. Although it appears very peaceful and serene and a nice place to hang out, the bay can be a deadly trap for tourists. From 2008 to 2013, nine people were reported to have died from snorkeling there. On top of that, who knows how many people were injured? Rocks, coral. If you ever do go snorkeling here, I have a friend who's from Hawaii. She said you don't need fins, just some like reef booties or water shoes should be fine. Cause getting out there, it's a little bit challenging. People scrape themselves constantly. There's not a lot of places you could stand up. So you have to kind of float out over a lot of the reef and rocks to get to areas where you want to snorkel. And that's where a lot of the damage comes from. Number two, Surfside Beach, Texas. Surfside Beach is south of Houston, right on the Gulf of Mexico. And it is home to a number of dangerous marine animals, including sharks, jellyfish, and stingrays. The beach is also known for strong rip currents and unpredictable weather patterns. They also have another problem. It's right next to Freeport Harbor Channel, like the opening, where this nasty harbor with all its refineries and everything else just empties out into the Gulf of Mexico. I was reading different studies. The local newspaper said the four mile long stretch of Surfside Beach has some of the cleanest and clearest sand and water you'll find in Texas. Meanwhile, Environment Texas, which is an organization that tests and grades different beaches and water and air quality in Texas, said that they found 90% of Texas beaches tested positive for unsafe levels of fecal bacteria on one or more occasions. I was reading on TripAdvisor, a bunch of people had gone there and they kept running into signs that said, swim alert due to high bacteria bacteria. Swimming is not advised. Now that can happen at any beach anywhere in the world. I used to see those when I was growing up in Southern California. But when you got that, you got the big chemical plant right next door. Yeah, I don't know. You may not die that week of something, but God knows what you're picking up. But the biggest problem that Surfside Beach sees is the rip current. That could be deadly. People get pulled out of them all the time around this part of Texas. All right, before we get to number one, if you don't know already, we have another channel called The Sweet Life for Briggs. It's all about travels and cruises and staying at hotels where we stay in suites and we take you on the trip with us. So head on over there and subscribe. All right, on to number one. And number one. Ocean Beach, San Francisco. And in case you didn't know, that's in California. Despite its stunning views of the Golden Gate Bridge, Ocean Beach in San Francisco is known for its powerful waves and strong rip currents that can easily drag swimmers out to sea. The beach is also prone to dense fog, which can make it difficult to navigate if you're on a boat or to rescue you if you do get caught in a rip current. Now, one of the first problems you have with this place past, you know, rip currents and fog and all that stuff, the blurb I read from a travel website said exactly what I said at the beginning views of the Golden Gate Bridge. Here's the thing. You can't see the Golden Gate Bridge from Ocean Beach. You got to get off the beach and take a, I don't know, 20 minute hike around the coastal trail and then you'll be able to see it. If you're on Baker Beach, which is around the point, it totally makes sense. You got a great view of the Golden Gate Bridge there. The other thing that freaks me out about this one, and I don't think there's been a legit shark attack there in decades, but that beach is in what they call the Red Triangle. It's this thing between Bodega Bay, the Farallon Islands, and Point Sur. It's where all the great whites feed and breed. So that's a little terrifying knowing what's going on offshore. It is San Francisco, so God knows what has made its way onto shore there as far as hypodermic needles, glass, and whatever else may make it onto that beach. I don't think that's as much of a problem as it used to be. There was a time late 90s, early 2000s where there were hypodermic needles washing up on the shores of California on a regular basis. But yeah, it is San Francisco, so there's always a potential for something like that. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.